What if you could add anything to an image just by typing it? What if you could erase not just a person from a photo, but their shadow and reflection too? What if you could rescue your worst, most pixelated photos and make them perfect? And what if you could take a normal picture and turn it into a gigapixel image you can zoom into 20 times? Today, we're not dealing in what ifs. These five revolutionary AI tools are real. They're here, and I'm showing you how they're about to completely change the game. This is going to be a fun one. All right, kicking things off with a seriously impressive tool from NVIDIA's research lab called Addit. Now, what if you could take any image and just add things to it with a simple text prompt without needing to be a Photoshop wizard? And what if the tool was smart enough to not just paste an object, but to understand where it should go, how it should be lit, and how it should interact with the scene? That's exactly what Addit promises. This is a completely training-free method designed to supercharge diffusion models like the Flux1 dev model. Think of it as a powerful upgrade that gives a great model incredible new editing capabilities, allowing it to intelligently add and integrate objects into any scene, all without any complex setup. Let's dive into some examples because the results speak for themselves. You give it a source image of an office wall and the prompt, the NVIDIA logo on the wall, and boom, the logo appears perfectly integrated with the right perspective and lighting looking like it was always there. Or take this tennis player. The prompt is tennis player wearing a headband and add it seamlessly adds a blue headband that wraps around his head perfectly. It even works on more whimsical prompts like taking a picture of a sheep and asking for a sheep wearing boots, and suddenly the sheep is realistically sporting boots on all four legs. The level of semantic understanding here, or what the researchers call affordance, is just top-notch. But where it really shines is in its step-by-step -step generation, which feels a lot like using a more advanced editor like Flux Context. You can start with an empty living room, and give it the prompt, a couch in the room. Now this is a test where I've seen other models fail by generating a completely different room, but add it correctly places a couch right in the original space. From there, you can keep building. A dog lying on the couch adds a dog to that new couch. Then a painting of cat saying, do it, adds a framed picture to the wall. And check out the text on that painting. It's perfectly legible, which shows this model handles text incredibly well, making it a fantastic all-around editor. The examples just keep getting better. A smartphone with a blank screen becomes a phone displaying a map. An empty chair gets a cute bunny sitting in it. You can even target specific objects in a group, like asking for the middle dog wearing a hat in a picture of three dogs, and it correctly places the hat only on the middle one, leaving the other two completely untouched. This level of precision is incredible. And look at this one. A person pointing at the equation E equals MC squared. It doesn't just paste text onto the blackboard. It generates the equation looking like it was handwritten with chalk, fitting the scene perfectly. When you put at it side by side with other models, the difference is stark. In a test to add a coyote behind the red-headed bird, at it generates a perfectly blurred coyote in the background, while other models create bizarre artifacts or fail completely. The human preference scores in the paper back this up, with users overwhelmingly choosing edits results. So how does it pull off these incredible edits without any extra training? The magic happens inside the diffusion model's attention mechanism. The researchers designed Adit to intelligently balance information from three key sources at once. First, it looks at the original source image to understand the scene's composition and details. Second, it takes your text prompt for the instruction. And third, it pays attention to the new image it's currently generating. The secret sauce is a weighted extended attention mechanism. Think of it as the model constantly negotiating between preserving the original image, following your text command, and making sure the new object makes sense in the evolving scene. It also uses a structure transfer step to create a blueprint of the original image's layout, ensuring the final edit maintains the same perspective and composition. Finally, a subject-guided latent blending process kicks in, which uses a segmentation model to create a precise mask around the new object, flawlessly blending it in while preserving every fine detail in the background. Now, for the best part, this is an open source project. The team has released the code on GitHub, so you can try it out for yourself. In terms of requirements, the page doesn't list a specific VRAM amount. 
However, since it's built on the Flux.1 dev model, it's reasonable to assume it could run on a system with around 8 gigabytes of VRAM, especially if you use one of the many quantized versions of Flux that are available. The model does have some minor limitations, like struggling to add a second similar object if one already exists in the image, but for the vast majority of tasks, it is incredibly powerful. This is a game changer for accessible, high quality image editing. As always, you know the drill, all the links to the project page, the research paper, and that awesome hugging face demo are down in the description for you to check out. Okay, the last tool was called Add It, so it's only fair our next tool is basically Remove It. This one is called Object Clear, and it tackles one of the most deceptively difficult tasks in image editing, truly completely removing an object from a photo. I'm not just talking about deleting the object itself, I'm talking about erasing every single trace it was ever there, and that includes its shadows and reflections too. This is where most in-painting tools fall apart, leaving behind blurry smudges or weird artifacts. Object Clear, however, is on another level. The examples on their project page are genuinely stunning. You see a cyclist casting a shadow on a wall. They draw a quick mask over the cyclist, and in the final image, both the person and their shadow are gone, leaving a perfectly clean wall. Or take a look at this person standing by the water. Their reflection is clearly visible. With a simple selection, Object Clear removes both the person and their reflection, perfectly reconstructing the water ripples behind them. We see it work on a car, on people running on the beach, on objects on a table. In every after shot, there is zero evidence an object was ever there. One of the most impressive examples shows a person in front of a mirror. This is the ultimate test, and Object Clear cleanly removes both the person and the reflection, which is just fantastic. It even works intelligently in complex scenes. In a shot of a boy playing football, you can select only the boy, and it will remove him and his shadow, while leaving the football and its shadow perfectly intact. The level of precision here is incredible. So how does it pull off these incredible edits without any extra training? The creators identified two core problems, a lack of good training data and models that weren't smart enough to understand object effects. Their solution is a brilliant two-part system. First, they built a massive custom data set called OBER, which stands for Object Effect Removal. They combined thousands of real camera-captured image pairs, one with an object, one without, with tens of thousands of simulated images. The crucial part is that for every image, they created precise masks for not just the object, but also for its associated shadows and reflections. This gave the model an incredible foundation to learn from. The model itself is built on top of SDXL in painting, but features a special object effect attention mechanism. During the removal process, the model is explicitly taught to pay attention to both the object you've masked and its visual effects in the surrounding area while simultaneously learning to ignore the background. For the final magic trick, it uses a strategy called attention-guided fusion. After it generates the content to fill the hole, it uses the attention map it created to seamlessly blend only the necessary new pixels into the image. This is why the background is preserved with such high fidelity, avoiding the unwanted changes in messiness that we see from other tools. Now, for the best part, this is fully open source, and you can try it right now. The code was recently released on GitHub, and the team has even provided a hugging face demo, which, of course, I had to put to the test for you guys. So, I went ahead and uploaded this photo of some penguins, clicked on just one of them to automatically create the mask, and hit go. Just 20 to 22 seconds, and you can see the result right here. It was done. The penguin I selected has completely vanished. Reflection, shadow and all. And look at the other four. They are perfectly preserved, completely untouched. The ability to remove objects this cleanly and this easily is a huge step forward for image editing. As always, you know the drill. All the links to the project page, the research paper, and that awesome hugging face demo are down in the description for you to check out. Okay, let's talk about a problem everyone has faced. Old, ugly, overcompressed JPEG images. You know the ones, they're full of blocky artifacts, weird color noise, and just look like they've been through the digital ringer. Our next tool, called CoDiff, is a specialized artifact exterminator designed to solve this exact problem. This isn't just another generic image restoration model. It's a purpose-built tool that leverages the power of diffusion to specifically target and eliminate the signature patterns of JPEG compression. And the best part is, it does it in a single step, making it incredibly fast and efficient. 
The visual results are immediately convincing. Take a look at this image. It's heavily pixelated with obvious artifacts from extreme compression. After running it through Codif, the output is stunningly clean and clear, with all that blockiness completely gone. It's not just for photos, either. Here's an art style image that's been mangled by compression. Codif restores it perfectly, preserving the style while removing the damage. The real magic is visible on complex shots, like this photo of a building where you can see nasty color banding and artifacts in the sky and on the walls. One pass through this tool, and the image is restored to a pristine state. It's important to note, this is not an upscaler. It isn't inventing pixels to make the image bigger. It's a pure restoration tool that recovers the lost quality and detail from the original compressed file. So how does Codif outperform other methods so effectively and efficiently? The secret is in its name. It's a compression-aware diffusion model. Unlike other models that just blindly try to clean up an image, Codif first understands the source of the problem. Its core component is a clever module the researchers call CAVE, or the compression-aware visual embedder. CAVE uses a dual learning strategy to become an expert at identifying JPEG compression. It learns in two ways simultaneously. First, it explicitly learns to predict the image's quality factor, basically figuring out how badly it was compressed. At the same time, it implicitly learns to reconstruct the final, high-quality image. By tackling both tasks at once, CAVE develops an incredibly nuanced understanding of what is real image detail and what is just ugly compression noise. This allows it to be surgically precise in its restoration. And as I mentioned, it does all of this in a single inference step. This makes it dramatically faster than typical multi-step diffusion models, which can be computationally expensive. So if you're ready to rescue your old photos, the great news is that the code for Codif is available on GitHub. It's built on top of the stable diffusion model, and the unique Codif module itself is a tiny 70 megabyte download. This means if you can already run stable diffusion, you can almost certainly run this. The actual VRAM you'll need will depend on your base stable diffusion setup, but the lightweight nature of Codif makes it far more accessible than other complex restoration systems. It's a fantastic tool for breathing new life into old images. And of course, I'll have the link to the GitHub repository for you down in the description. All right, our next tool is one of those that you have to see to believe, and it tackles a problem we can all relate to, fixing terrible, low-quality photos of faces. The tool is called OSD Face, which stands for One-Step Diffusion Model for Face Restoration. And one step is the key here. It promises to take faces that are so blurry and pixelated that they're barely recognizable and restore them into crisp, high-fidelity portraits, all in a single, lightning-fast pass. Let's just look at the results because they are genuinely wild. You see a before image that's a complete pixelated mess, and the after from OSD Face is a perfectly clear, natural-looking face. Here's another that's incredibly blurry. The restoration is just wonderful. It's not just cleaning up artifacts, it's reconstructing the entire face with plausible details while keeping the person's identity intact. When you put it side by side with other state-of-the-art models like Codeformer, VQFR, or even other diffusion-based methods like Diffbur, the difference is clear. While the others do a decent job, OSD Face consistently produces a result that is strikingly closer to the original high-quality photo. It's better at hair texture, it gets the fine details in the eyes right, and most importantly, it feels like the same person. The benchmark scores confirm this, with OSD Face beating the competition on key metrics like LPIPS and DISTS, proving it's a top-tier performer. So how does it pull this off, especially when so many other models struggle with faces? The genius of OSD Face lies in how it understands and uses information from the blurry input image. Instead of using a text prompt, it generates its own highly detailed visual prompt. This is done through a core component called the Visual Representation Embedder, or VRE. Think of the VRE as an expert artist that studies the low-quality face and creates a special set of codes that describe its most important features, like the structure of the eyes, the shape of the nose, and so on. This visual prompt is then fed into the diffusion model to guide the restoration. But here's the clever part. It also has a built-in identity guardian. During its training, the model uses a powerful face recognition system, ArcFace, to constantly check if the face it's restoring still looks like the original person. This facial identity loss forces the model to obsess over preserving the unique characteristics of the individual, which is why the final results maintain such a strong identity likeness. And remember, it does all of this in a single step, making it dramatically faster and more efficient than older multi-step diffusion techniques that can take a long time to run. For everyone eager to try this at home, the creators have set up a GitHub repository for the project. As of right now, the final code and pre-trained models haven't been released just yet, but the page is up, which is usually a great sign that they're coming soon.
This is definitely one to keep an eye on as it has the potential to be a go-to tool for anyone looking to rescue old family photos or restore any kind of degraded facial image. Once that code drops, you can bet we'll be testing it out. Of course, the link to the project page and the GitHub repo are down in the description. And for the final tool today, we have something that feels like it's pulled straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's called Ultra Zoom, and it does exactly what the name implies. It gives your photos an absolutely insane level of zoom, effectively turning a regular image into a massive, explorable gigapixel photo. The core idea is that you feed it two things, a wide full shot of a scene and a separate detailed close-up of an object within that scene. Ultra Zoom then does its magic and merges them into a single, seamless image where you can zoom from a wide-angle view right down to the microscopic details. The interactive demos on their website are the best way to understand just how mind-bending this is. They have an image of a patterned carpet. When you're zoomed out, it's just a carpet. But as you start zooming in, it keeps going and going and going. The image renders in real time to reveal incredible detail. And at 23 zoom, you can see the individual fibers and threads of the carpet as if you were looking through a microscope. Another example with a jersey lets you zoom in 16 times until you can see the texture of every single thread in the fabric. You start with a normal looking photo of a pineapple, and by the time you zoom all the way in, you can see the fine texture on its surface with perfect clarity. The level of detail it can reconstruct is just on another level. So how does this incredible zoom capability actually work? It's actually cleverer than you might think. It's a three-stage pipeline. It all starts with data set construction. You need to capture a few things, and you can even do this with a modern iPhone. A detailed close-up of the object, a wide full-view shot, and a connecting video that zooms between the two. But here's the genius part. It doesn't just stitch these together. It uses them to create a custom mini data set for that specific object. It takes high quality patches from the close up and intentionally degrades them to perfectly mimic how they would look in the blurry wide angle shot. To do this perfectly, it uses a state of the art point tracking system to precisely register and map the close up onto the full image. This leads to the second and most important stage, the per instance fine tuning. Instead of using one giant generic model, UltraZoom fine-tunes a unique specialized copy of the model for every single object you want to zoom in on. This is why the details are so specific and tailored. It's using a powerful text-to-image model as its backbone, combined with the Super Resolution Control Net, and efficiently adapts it using LoRa. It's essentially teaching a new model to become an expert on restoring that one specific texture, whether it's carpet fibers or the skin of a pineapple. And finally, with that custom-trained model ready, it performs the gigapixel inference. Because the final image is enormous and can't fit into GPU memory, it cleverly processes the image in overlapping tiles. To avoid those ugly seam lines you see in other tiled methods, it seamlessly blends the overlapping regions at every step of the generation process. So it's not just stitching images, it's a sophisticated process of creating a custom data set, training a bespoke AI model, and then intelligently generating the final gigapixel image tile by tile. The results are truly next level. Now for everyone getting ready to turn their entire photo library into zoomable masterpieces, let's talk about the hardware. The coded models haven't been fully released just yet, but the developers have put up a GitHub repo and given us a hint at the requirements. And you might want to sit down for this one. The VRAM requirement is pretty hefty. They state that you'll need a GPU with 40 gigabytes of VRAM for inference, and training was done on massive 80 gigabyte cards. This means you're going to need a top tier card like a 4090 to even run this locally. In the future, it's likely we'll see quantized versions that bring that requirement down, but for now, this is a tool for the high-end hardware enthusiasts. This is a seriously impressive piece of tech, and hopefully we see the full models and code really soon so we can all get our hands on it. As always, the links to everything I've discussed today are waiting for you in the description below. So, those are the tools that are blowing my mind right now, but I want to hear from you. Which one of these is a total game changer for your projects? Are you most excited about adding things, removing things, or that insane ultra zoom capability? Let me know in the comments below. All the links to check them out for yourself are, of course, down in the description. If this video helped you discover something new, the best way to let me know is by hitting that like button and subscribing for more deep dives. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.